post-COVID testing uh, and COVID vaccinations. Uh, we are part of the ministry's uh, asymptomatic COVID testing program. Um, and we're proud to be part of the province's response to the pandemic and proud to help our fellow Ontarians. Uh, and we're ready to do more. Pharmacists in Ontario have at times in, during this pandemic been one of the few accessible healthcare providers in the community. Last year alone, pharmacists in Ontario provided close to 2 million vaccinations. Canadian pharmacists have delivered greater than 10 million doses of the COVID vaccines, with 4 million doses in Ontario alone. We're proud of that. Pharmacists have been available and accessible to Canadians throughout this pandemic. Minister Elliott, I welcome you to the podium to make your announcement today. Thank you. Well, thank you very much, Hitesh, for your kind introduction and for hosting us today at your pharmacy. Good morning, everyone. I want to start by extending my deep appreciation to uh, Jeff, uh, Shoppers Drug Mart, and Ontario's pharmacists for your dedication to protecting the health and safety of all Ontarians. Throughout the COVID-19 pandemic, you have supported key initiatives to stop the spread of the virus. From helping with COVID-19 testing to continuing to getting shots in arms, thank you for your her heroic efforts. Protecting the health and well-being of all Ontarians remains our government's top priority. Thanks to the millions of Ontarians who have rolled up their sleeves and our government's cautious approach to reopening our public health and our, to reopening, sorry, our public health and health system indicators continue to trend in the right direction. To keep Ontarians healthy this flu season and ensure our hospital capacity is available for those who need it most, our government has invested over $89 million dollars to deliver one of the largest flu immunization programs in Ontario's history. Last year, millions of Ontarians took advantage of the free flu shot and we saw historically low rates of flu across the entire province. Building on this success, this year we have purchased over 7.6 million doses of the flu vaccine which is 1.4 million more doses than last year. This includes 1.8 million doses specifically for seniors. As Ontarians flu supply is delivered in multiple shipments and the schedule is determined by the federal government and manufacturers, the province's initial supply of the flu vaccine was used to protect long-term care homes residents and hospital patients. This month, flu shots are available for seniors, children between six months and four years old, pregnant women, and other individuals at high risk of flu complications. And beginning in November, the flu shot is available to all Ontarians in pharmacies such as Hitesh's, doctors and nurse practitioner offices and through public health units. In November, we will continue to receive the flu vaccine in multiple shipments. So we encourage everyone to be patient and call ahead to ensure the flu shot is available at your doctor's office or at your neighborhood pharmacy. I would also like to note that the National Advisory Committee on Immunization or NACI has recommended that the COVID-19 vaccines may be given at the same time as the flu vaccine. So if you're getting your flu shot and still have yet to receive your first or second dose of the COVID-19 vaccine, now is definitely the time. As we head into the fall and begin gathering indoors more often with family and friends, it's even more important to get your flu shot in addition to following public health measures to protect yourself and all of those around you. So thank you. We'll go to the phone lines for questions. Just a reminder, one question, one follow up. Over to the first question, please. Your first question comes from Matthew Bingley with Global News. Please go ahead. Matthew. Hi, uh, sorry. Hi there, um, I'm, I'm, I apologize. I'm on a teleconference. I'm not aware, is, is Premier Ford there? No, he's not. 
Okay. I, well, in that case, I, I'll get you to respond to this. Um, I, I'd just like to understand uh, how you would respond to the Premier's comments yesterday on immigrants. Uh, he made a comment about them being on the dole. Uh, many people are calling that out as being insensitive and calling for an apology and, and also pointing to the fact that it uh, increases negative stereotypes and uh, potential harms to new Canadians, uh, whether they be immigrants or refugees. And I'm wondering if, if you would support a, uh, a, an apology. I, I don't think it's necessary because what the Premier was actually saying is that we need more immigrants in Ontario. We have lots of work. Uh, People come here, they do work hard, they provide for themselves and their families, they contribute to communities, and we need more people in Ontario. That's what the Premier was indicating. Follow up? Yeah, we're, we're talking shot, but of, of course Pfizer is, is of course in the news because of uh, uh, the, the doses for, for children. I'm just wondering uh, how, how quickly would you like this, this rollout continue and and uh, for the actual uh, distribution of it how would you like to see that handled as well I'm sorry Matthew are you speaking about for children aged 5 to 11 when Correct, it's available yeah, yeah. Yes. I, well yeah. obviously it's, it's on to the next round here so I'm just wondering if I could get a reaction for you on that front Yes, well, we are working actively with our public health units to uh, determine a rollout for that vaccine uh, when it is approved by Health Canada, of course. And we will be ready as soon as it's approved to be able to distribute it and have it available for children across the entire province. So we are actively working on that file now. Next question. Your next question comes from Laura Stone with the Globe and Mail. Please go ahead, Laura. Hi, Minister Elliott. Um, I wanted to ask about virtual care and the letter that uh, came out from Dr. Moore and others urging doctors to um, to resume in-person visits. Uh, is this something that the government is concerned about, that, that it's your impression that not enough doctors are doing in-person visits? And, um, and, and how do you plan to hold the medical community to account here if, um, if, if it's not in your eyes satisfactory the amount of, of patients that they're actually seeing in person? Well, no, it's not a big concern because we know that uh, many uh, physicians have been uh, in active practice seeing patients in, in person uh, since the pandemic began, taking the uh, necessary precautions, of course. Uh, one of the things that we were trying to expand when we, uh, before COVID came upon us, was uh, virtual care because we know that for certain, uh, it, health concerns, this is something that can be treated by a phone call, by a virtual visit between a, a, a patient and uh, his or her um, physician. This is something that we wanted to expand, and it has expanded hugely, which is wonderful, and there's no turning back now. People like it. They like the convenience of it. They like the, uh, the time that's saved. They get the answers that they're looking for. But for some conditions, uh, there is no um, virtual um, remedy for that, that people do need to be seen personally by their physicians, and so we're encouraging physicians to do that. And uh, they are largely doing that, so it's not a big concern at this point. Follow-up? And just on the on your your point there about there's no turning back. Can you can you elaborate on the discussions that the government's having with the OMA about making virtual care permanent? Um, how do you foresee foresee that in the future? And what do you think the balance will be on on in person and virtual visits um, over the next several months and heading into the future? Okay. Well, I can't comment on specific discussions with the OMA, but I can certainly say that. Um, our information is that physicians are happy with the virtual uh, services that they're able to provide. The public is certainly very happy with it. And so this is a way, I believe, that people can have greater access uh, to uh, medical services when they need them in a very timely manner. And so there is uh, more work to be done to expand some of these virtual services across the province. 
so that people, first of all, can make their appointments online, they can have online visits, but they also want to be able to see their own uh, public health records, or not public health records, personal health records, that uh, we want to make sure that people are able to see. This is part of, of entering into the 21st century of, of medicine, and this is something that uh, people want, practitioners want, and it's something that the, the government wants to move forward. So we're continuing our work on this. Next question. Your next question comes from Richard Southern with City News. Please go ahead. Hi, good morning, Deputy Premier. I want to come back to those comments that Premier Ford made yesterday because a lot of people are talking about them this morning. And again, the Premier said, quote, you come here like every other new Canadian. You work your tail off. If you think you're coming to collect the dole and sit around, not going to happen, go somewhere else. Deputy Premier, do you agree with Mr. Ford? What Premier Ford was saying was that we need more people to do the jobs that we have available here in Ontario. And so we encourage more immigration. We need more people in Ontario. We need more people to come from other jurisdictions. We welcome that. And we know that when people come here, they do work hard. They do work hard for themselves, for their families, for their communities. And so we welcome that. That is what the Premier intended to indicate yesterday. Follow up. Respectfully, he didn't. He, he indicated that they, they weren't working in the face of a lot of evidence to say that uh, that's actually not the case. Uh, the opposition leaders are, are calling this demeaning, and they're calling for Mr. Ford to apologize. Do you think he should apologize, Deputy Premier? As I said earlier, I don't believe it's necessary because that is not what the Premier was saying. He was indicating that his expectation is when people come here that they will work, and we know they are working. We know that people, when they come to Ontario, they work very hard to start businesses, to uh, work in their communities, they give back, they are, um, are great to um, incur in increase the economy of Ontario, increase our productivity. The Premier knows that and I know that and we welcome more immigration to Ontario. Next question. Your next question comes from Allison Jones with the Canadian Press. Please go ahead. Hi, Minister. Um, Dr. Moore said recently that he was having some discussions with um, family doctors and their associations over extending, possibly extending a vaccine mandate to them. And I wanted to get your thoughts on that. Should we be mandating vaccines for family doctors? Do you mean for, front, for doctors themselves to have the vaccines? I'm not quite sure of your question. For, for a family physician. I think most family physicians have already had uh, the uh, double vaccinations and uh, knowing that they are seeing sometimes patients that uh, have not been doubly vaccinated, I'm sure that doctors would want to protect themselves. That is something that I know the, uh, that many organizations are recommending and so our expectation is that uh, family physicians would be double vaccinated. Follow up. Um, do you have any more details yet to share with us on the medical exemption process for the enhanced vaccine certificates? I know your government's guidance um, says that uh, medical exemptions, the claim should ideally be referred to an allergist or an immunologist. Is that going to be part of the process um, when public health decides them? Is there going to be some sort of independent board made up of allergists and immunologists? Uh, that's not something that we're looking at right now, but we, as you know, there are very few medical exemptions uh, to uh, disqualify someone from having the vaccine. And we are uh, working with the College of Physicians and Surgeons who have issued very strict guidelines to their members about what uh, qualifies as a medical exemption and what does not. Uh, I understand that there have been several physicians already that are not allowed to provide medical exemptions, that they were not following the guidelines. Uh, we expect that they will. Now, we know that the CPSO is watching that very closely, and that is something that uh, we will continue to follow. And that, as you know, in order to have a medical exemption included 
in the, uh, the QR code that one receives. This is something that has to be entered into our COVAX system. So there will be a process whereby people who do have medical exemption letters from their physicians will be able to register with their local public health officer and that will be uh, reviewed and then entered into the COVAX system and then can be administered as part of the QR code. So we're actively working on that right now. Last question on the phone lines, and then we'll do one question from the floor. Your next question comes from Charlie Pinkerton with iPolitics. Please go ahead. Charlie. Good morning, Minister. Um, I'm going to be piggybacking on my colleague uh, Matthew's questions about vaccinating children um, ages 5 to 11. Um, with Pfizer's submission to Health Canada, reason suggests that uh, that vaccine could be approved for this age group in weeks or even days. Um, Dr. Merrick Moore shared a, a few details of the province's plans um, to immunize kids between 5 and 11 about two weeks ago, but there still seems to be lots of gaps at that time. Um, the province wasn't aware when it would be receiving vaccines, how many it would receive, or whether it would be required to give doses first to certain populations, like those of a certain age bracket, or those who are immuno immunocompromised. Um, can you fill in these details or give any more clarity about what these plans uh, will be now that um, pr we're presumably uh, closer to um, vaccinating this age group? Sure, I can't speak to the, uh, the medical aspects of it because I'm not a physician, but I can tell you about the plan. There, uh, we have asked each of the 34 public health units to submit their plan for vaccinating children between ages 5 and 11 and we have received their plans. The plans are now being reviewed by our central team at the Ministry of Health and it's a variety of ways that are going to be employed to vaccinate children depending on the different geographic location but we will be uh, working with pharmacies, with public health units, with primary care as well and by the time the uh, vaccine is approved for use by Health Canada, we will be ready to go. We have the, the forces on the ground ready to go and I know that parents are concerned about this, but they need not be because we will be ready to go. We are actively working on this and putting the final plan together right now. Follow up. Okay, and something you said there was, was similar to what Dr. Moore also said a few weeks ago um, when he was mentioning the, the ways of, of vaccinating um, this age group. But what he didn't say and what you didn't say just now is the possibility of having vaccines or COVID vaccines administered in schools like, yes. um, like other vaccines have been and, and are. Um, is this a possibility? It would seem like an efficient way to vaccinate a large group of children at once. Um, so is, is that something that any of the public health units have proposed uh, or that your government is open uh, to, to have happening? Yes, it certainly is a possibility to have something like a mass vaccine clinic at a school. Not necessarily during the school hours, but perhaps on weekends or in evenings because many parents uh, with small children would prefer to be with their child when they receive the vaccination. So all of those issues are definitely being taken into consideration and, and schools are a possibility, but uh, subject to the, uh, to the ways in which I've just described for administering the vaccines. Last question. Madam Premier, Deputy Premier, um, this is a question following up from the question I asked uh, Mr. Premier yesterday. Um, we know of the two doctors that have been reported that have uh, um, fallen outside of the I believe guidelines and might have issued um, uh, issued exemptions for COVID vaccinations. Um, and you just uh, said several doctors. How many doctors are being investigated or have been asked not to uh, continue giving out exemptions for COVID-19 vaccinations? I understand right now that there are four physicians who are unable to um, produce medical exemptions for any of their patients. So there were two several days ago, there are now another two. So this is something that's clearly being followed up very closely by CPSO and that uh, gives us confidence in the system that it is working as it should be. Okay, thank you very much for that. And the next one is um, about the flu shot. Um, given the fact that there was uh, very few flu shots yesterday or last year because of the protocols we took for COVID and then we usually get our flu shots from uh, um, uh, uh, studies from Australia that usually have their flu season first. Yes. How, how do we know that this, uh, this flu 
shot is going to be effective, and what do we base it on, uh, what flus that we should be immunizing against? Well, this is calculated by uh, people that have uh, epidemiologists and others who have knowledge of what's going on in other parts of the world. But uh, last year's flu shot was very effective. We actually, in Ontario, only had 25 um, lab-tested uh, cases of flu in Ontario, where normally we have thousands. So it clearly did work last year. And we have ordered uh, 1.4 million more shots this year. So we certainly encourage anyone to, uh, when if the time is available for them, if they don't fall into these sort of categories of people who are particularly vulnerable that are receiving them right now, as of early November, anyone who uh, wants one will be able to get one. And it can happen at the same time as a COVID shot. So if you haven't had your COVID shot yet either, please come in and get both. Perfect. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you. you. Thanks, everyone.